the example yeah. sensory system. So sensory system consists of a primary sensation as well as cortical sensation. To begin with the primary sensation, I would like to demonstrate how to test fine touch, which is a sensation of a large fiber as well as carrying in the posture form. Now I will touch you with this cotton where it should tell me whether you are able to feel the touch or not. Now first demonstrate with eyes open and then demonstrate with eyes closed. Now can you feel the touch of the cotton? Yeah. Now just close your eyes. I will demonstrate at various places and tell me whether you can feel it or not. Can you feel now? Yes. Sir. Can you feel the cotton? Yes sir. Can you feel? Yes sir. Can you feel the touch? Yes sir. Can you feel? Yes sir. Is it the same both sides? Same. This is how you have to examine the sensor system. And uh, examine always from a normal area to an abnormal area. So next will be the examining the vibration sense. For that, uh, we have to test the vibration sense at bony prominences. This vibration sense is also carried by a large fiber as well as in the posterior column. And now I will demonstrate with the, again with the same eyes open. I will ask the patient to feel it and then we will do it with the eyes closed. Now I will strike this tuning fork, the 128 Hz tuning fork used for vibration purpose and will keep it in the bony prominence and I will ask him whether can you feel this vibration? Yes, sir. Okay, now I will just demonstrate with eyes closed. Can you close your eyes? Feel this. Use it at the bony prominences. To begin with, I will do it with a uh, ball of grape. Can you able to feel? Yes, sir. Can you able to feel? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Now I am going to examine the joint position cells. Uh, first, I will demonstrate to the patient with the eyes open and then we have to do it with the eyes closed. Now I will explain. I will start with the uh, fingers joint. This is the distal interphalangeal joint. Now, how to hold the joint position sense? You have to stabilize the joint with the help of the uh, these two fingers. You have to stabilize and you have to hold the finger at the sideways, not at the tip. And also don't give too much of amplitude. Give a small amplitude, not big amplitude of movement so that you can detect very easily. So now, you have to tell whether the joint have, is in the upward or the finger is downward, you have to tell with eyes closed. Now can you close your eyes? So now, uh, with the eyes closed, we are going to demonstrate. Now I will give a small amount of movement. Upward or downward? Upward. Upward or downward? Downward. Upward or downward? Don't give in an alternate manner, upward and downward. Sometimes give three times upwards and two times downwards. Like that you can uh, randomly pick this direction. Not regularly an up and down, up and down. So that the patient may not predict the uh, direction. We are going to test the pain and temperature which is a function of the small fibers carried in the spinal thalamic tract. So regarding the pain and temperature, first you have to use a toothpick. It's a wooden toothpick, it's disposable. Don't use sharp instruments as there is a risk of transmission of infectious diseases. So use this, uh, use and throw disposable wooden stick. Now, now you just prick like this. You have to tell whether it's feel the pricking sensation. You can close your eyes. Are you able to feel? Yes, sir. Are you able to feel? Yes, sir. Equally? Equally. Equally on both sides? Yes. Equally on both sides? Now, regarding how to test for sensation is, it depends upon the what neural axis is involved. If it is a spinal cord, go from upward to downward direction. You have to find out the sensing level. If it is a thalamic uh, involvement, you compare right and left. You compare like this. You compare right and left. In case of a peripheral nerve, you have to test in the nerve's distribution. For example, if it is a radial nerve, you have to test the anatomical snuff box sensation. In, in case if it is a median, you have to test over the thinar eminence. If it is a alna, you have to test over the hypothenar eminence. Like that, you have to test on the nerve distribution in case you want to test in the nerve pathology. So it depends upon the neural axis how to test the sensory system. Regarding the temperature sense, so how to test the temperature sense? For that, you need a test tube. You need a test tube and you have to fill it with hot water as well as the cold water and ask the patient whether he can feel the hotness of the tube or coldness of the tube depending upon the water. So at what temperature is? Uh, 7 degrees Celsius above the room temperature is hot. You can use it as a guideline. 7 degrees below the room temperature, you can use it as a cold. So this is a cold water which I am testing now. You can close your eyes. Are you able to feel the coldness? Yes sir. Are you able to feel the coldness? Yes sir. Are you able to feel the coldness? Yes sir. Are you able to feel? Yes sir. 
Now repeat this with hot water also, so that you can complete the spinothalamic tract sensations. Sorry. Now I am going to demonstrate two point discriminant. It's also a function of a posterior column as well as a large fiber. For that, you need a two point discriminator. In case you don't have this, you can use a bent paper clip and you can measure the distance. But here there is a measurement of various uh, distances between the two points. Here there is a measurement. I hope you will be able to see the centimeters. I think you can be able to see this. If you don't have this, you can use a bent paper clip and you can measure the distance. So in fingertips, it will be around uh, 0.6 centimeter, whereas in hands and feet, it is around 3 centimeter for the patient to sense that it is two points. Before testing the patient, just demonstrating with his eyes open, can you see here? See, this is two points, and this is a single point. So how you feel, you just tell me whether it is a single point or a two point. Now I am going to test him. In fingers, it is around 0.6 centimeter the normal value. In hands and feet, it is 3 centimeter. Now I am going to test him. Can you show your finger? Close your eye. Now I am going to begin with 5 mm. Is it a single or a double? Double. I am it. Single or a double? Double. Yes. His fingertip uh, sensory two point discrimination is normal. You can repeat it with the hands and feet where you will have 3 cm. At least they have to tell in a gap of 3 cm. That is a normal value for the lower limbs and upper limbs. In fingertips, it is very sensitive. In lips also is very sensitive. Now, I am going to test the primary sensation which is graphesthesia, stereognosis and extinction. So first to begin with the gra uh, graphesthesia, I will draw uh, numbers or alphabets in his fingers he has to tell with eyes closed. Now I will draw, I will demonstrate with eyes open. Now I will draw in your fingers, you can open your eyes, I will draw the numbers or letters in your finger and you have to tell me what it is, what number or alphabet. Okay, yes. you can close your eyes. Now, He is able to identify the numerals which I drew on his hand with his eyes closed. And now coming to stereognosis, I will give an object and he has to identify by touching the objects by examining the contours without opening his eyes. So he has to close his eyes and give a commonly used object so that he can palpate and tell what object it is. Now can you close your eyes? I will give an object in your hand and you have to palpate and touch and see and tell what object it is. Now you can touch, you can examine this and touch. Yes. Yes, it's a key and he is able to tell. This is called stereognosis. In parietal lobations, you may have patient may not be able to tell what is the letter you have drawn in your hand or what is the object that you are giving for identification. Regarding the tactile extinction, we have to touch on the right first, left first, then simultaneously. Patients with tactile extinction will not be able to tell when you touch simultaneously. Now I will demonstrate you. Now you have to tell which hand I am touching. Keep here. You can close your eyes. Left. Right. Both. Yes. Patients with primary cortical sensation defect may not be able to identify when you touch both sides, but they will answer correctly if you touch individually. This is the tactile extinction. Finally, you can test for Roma, which is a sign of sensory ataxia. When there is the involvement of the large fiber or a posterior column, for that, ask the patient to stand with a narrow stance. You can stand with a narrow, narrow, narrow. Ask the patient to stand in a narrow pace. Ask him to be straight. Now, you can ask him to close his eyes tightly, so that whether he sways or not, can you can close your eyes tightly. So you can be ready to catch hold if the patient has seen him severe ataxia. There is no ataxia, he is not swaying with eyes closed. So the way Romberg is negative and Romberg positive is a sign of a sensory ataxia, not a cerebellar ataxia. In cerebellar ataxia, patient may not stand in a narrow base even with eyes open. So Rhombogism is a sign of a sensory ataxia and not a cerebellar ataxia.